Welcome back everybody to the 5J5 studio. I'm Parametric Phil and this is Rhino Fundamentals episode six. Now, uh, did you think I was not gonna do the explosion? Explosion! <laughs> okay, I, I, had, I had to do it. I just had to do it, okay. So this is the deal, episode six. We're just gonna be looking at troubleshooting uh, strategies. So we're gonna talk about um, different ways to evaluate uh, how, how we if we need to fix solids if they're not if they're not working so if we're having boolean operation problems or if our curves are self intersecting and we're not getting solid extrusions stuff like that so this is this is I really wish I had access to a video like this um, when I was starting out because a lot of these problems it took a long time to kind of understand how these things were working and and what I was supposed to do to try to fix them. So let's just charge right into it, okay? So let's start off just talking about um, how we can evaluate what what our items are, okay? So um, we need to understand how to determine whether we're working with um, you know any of these components: open polylines, closed polylines, surfaces, uh, solids, closed poly surfaces. So what we can do is we can click on it and it will tell us whether it's a curve you know or a surface but well, I want to know if it's open or closed so there's a few different ways we can do that we can click on our item and then we can type in what and that will tell us all the information that we need to know it will say it's a valid curve it's a closed poly curve with 12 uh, curve segments and uh, you know that's that's basically all we need to know so uh, if we click on one of these we type in what it will, tell it, it will say a valid poly surface a closed solid poly surface with 10 surfaces okay so that's the information that we need to know the other thing we can do is use the select um, the select command and, and we can select a lot of different things here uh, we can select open curves to identify um, the open curves that are in the file we can select um, poly surfaces okay to identify Poly surfaces. So we have a lot of different selection commands um, to help us understand what uh, different types of geometry we have in our in our file. Okay, so let me just jump into the first problem that I can think of. Um, you know that I used to deal with. Um, I don't know how to simulate this. I can't remember how it happens uh, in you know in the real world. But oftentimes we'll end up with uh, a curve like like this, and it looks fine. It looks like a simple rectangle. Um, but we, but if we try to uh, extrude it, we're going to get this error. Curves selected um, to extrude uh, include self-intersecting curves. Okay, so what we can do to help diagnose this problem is we can go to uh, show ends. And now uh, these checkboxes will be on by default. We, if we turn off uh, the curve seams and the polycurve joints. Now we can see where our curve start is and where our curve end is and that tells us that they're not in the same place and if this was a, a good a proper closed uh, polyline then the curve start and end would be in the same place so now we know um, that there's a that, that now we can identify where our problem is. And so now we know that uh, that we need to in this case, all we need to do is delete our um, curve end or curve start, and now we have a good non, it's a non-intersecting uh, poly curve, polyline. Okay, so here's another example. Um, if we have an open curve, but, but um, or if we have a curve that we think is closed, but it's not closed, um, it might be hard to identify where that opening is. We can use um, a command called close curve and that might help, that might work for what you're doing, but it's kind of risky depending on where the end and start are. It might make up for a bad surface or a bad curve. So um, it's probably a good idea just to identify where, um, where you have that opening. So you can again use the show ends command and then you can see where that gap is. Okay, here's an interesting example. Um, this happens a lot when we're working, well, this happens in a lot of models. Let's say uh, we're drawing a curve 
um, and it's supposed to be, um, you know, let's say it's supposed to come off the end here, and we're just drawing this this curve like this. And this curve is supposed to be uh, on the ground plane, and we want to extrude it into so, like a roof or something. But if we go into perspective, um, this curve was not drawn flat at all. So we don't have to redraw this. Uh, it's a very simple procedure. Uh, we just go to set point, and then we turn off the Y in the, in the X, and we set the, the Z to align to world plane, and then we can just choose where we want it to be. So we can choose, we can choose to drop it right there if we want to, and then we can close it. And then we could extrude that or something, whatever you wanted to do with it. So, but to avoid that happening in the first place, what we would do is we would click on project first, and then we would draw our curve. And now it's on the now it's been projected onto the ground plane. So project just uh, project will depending on what, which viewport you're in, it will project all points and anything you're drawing or, or, or uh, generating, it will project, project it onto the ground plane. So here's just a little thing. Um, um, don't confuse this project with the project command. If we want to project this curve onto this surface, Here's something I just want you to be aware of. Um, let's do project and select our surface and uh, our direction is in the Z and loose is no and I'm going to bring up that in a second. Okay, so now we have this curve and look at how many points it has. Uh, so since loose was turned off, if this curve is trying to follow this surface really tightly and we can, we can generate a valid surface, that's fine. So, um, but the point is, um, I just want to warn you that when it has this many points, uh, or this many points is, is, is probably going to be fine, but sometimes you might run into problems if you have, if your curve is too complex and has too many points. If you're, say, trying to loft between uh, certain curves and, and uh, you have very complex curves that might turn into a problem, um, if try it, just try it out, and if, but if it doesn't work, that might be a cause for a problem. And generally speaking, uh, the less points, the better. Uh, it's just a general rule of thumb, but it's not always true. So you can rebuild this curve if you want to. Um, and now, but just the curve will not follow the surface perfectly. So you can't use it to trim the surface or anything. So I'm just saying uh, this is not uh, something you should always do, but generally speaking, try to keep your curve as simple as possible. But the other thing you could do instead of rebuilding it is that when you go to project it, you can turn loose on, and then it will it will maintain only the number of original control points. So um, it, you you can see that it, it all it did was realign uh, the original control points to try to fit the surface as close as possible. So again, this is not fitting the surface. Um, very precisely at all, but if you're just trying to get the general shape, then this is the best method to use. You should use the loose project um, because it maintains a very simple curve and it'll be easier to work with, but if you need it to follow the surface perfectly, then don't use a loose project. Okay, so if, if we have duplicate curves, because maybe we have uh, some kind of pattern or something, if we were to explode this, then we would have these duplicate curves here. And if we didn't want those, we could just go select duplicate. Oops. Uh, select dupe. And we can just um, we can just delete those. And now we don't have any duplicates. So this, if you're familiar with AutoCAD, that would be the same as uh, similar to the auto the uh, overkill command in AutoCAD. Okay, and the last thing. I want to briefly talk about is uh, how, to, how we can evaluate um, boolean, boolean failures. We didn't talk too much about booleans in the last few episodes, but we will get into that at some point. Um, I'm going to try to set up a boolean 
a Boolean failure. Okay, so I'm going to try to Boolean difference uh, this object with this box. And so we have a failure. Uh, and actually, this is a neat feature. I believe it's new in Rhino 6 where it actually tells me where the failure is. And I can actually start to see here that um, the problem is that my box is actually not a closed poly surface. And if it wasn't this easy to see, this is a really good tool to be able to figure something like that out. We click on our object and then we go to show uh, edges. And uh, we're, right now we're showing all edges, but all we want to know is naked edges. Naked edges are, are where uh, edges are not joined, but all edges in a closed poly surface are joined to other surfaces. So a closed poly surface should not have any naked edges. So this is a really good way to identify where you have openings in your in your uh, in your solids in what are supposed to be solids, so it's a really quick way to identify uh, those types of problems. So edge analysis, show edges. So another way uh, that might bring clarity towards why you're having a uh, boolean failure is you can do an intersection between two solids and then you can just hide those temporarily. And if you take a look at that curve, it should be a closed poly curve. Um, but right now we can see that it's not, it's two open curves. So where that, where that intersection failed, that will tell you where the Boolean operation is also failing. So that's just another little trick that you can use to uh, identify any types of Boolean failures. All right, awesome. So I think we covered a few uh, a few troubleshooting techniques, and there will definitely be more of these troubleshooting videos. Um, let me know what kind of problems you're having, and uh, give me the, the most information possible. And maybe I'll make more videos talking about a few a few other strategies that we can use to to uh, diagnose what kind of problems we're having because. Um, like I said, there will always be problems, but we can develop, develop uh, techniques to diagnose them um, more efficiently. So that's what I'm trying to do. All right, uh, I hope you guys learned something, and um, I'll see you guys later.